Amen. I really want us to always practice. I feel like it's something we need to really pay attention to. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. It's something um, the Lord laid in our heart to even encourage the church. Yesterday, uh, we had a meeting with the women. And um, I think I'm going to extend it. We're just across all board. We're going to just do the challenge of praying in the Spirit, building our most holy faith. You know, just praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit praying in the spirit, you know, and um, Bible study for July will be focusing on the Holy Spirit and just praying in the spirit, reading scriptures about the Holy Spirit and just praying in the spirit, just praying in the spirit. We'll do a bit of it in the morning on, on 6 a.m. or 9 a.m. We'll really go in, praying in the Holy Ghost together. I feel like it is very important. I don't know, for whatever reason, you know, it's something we should all practice in our lives, but I think collectively the Lord is encouraging us and calling us together to birth and pray more in the spirit, 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 read the Bible, pray more in the spirit. We're going to explore, you know, as much as we can, um, the 9 p.m. watch about the Holy Spirit and pray in the spirit, you know, just pray in the spirit, at least a minimum of 30 minutes and just pray the spirit together, you know, and I pray the Lord God will help us in the name of Jesus. So um, the team will work on that. We're going to do in the word and pray in the spirit channel, just deliberately um, just doing that. Amen. Um, this morning, I, I don't know. Um, um, first, I will, tomorrow is, is public holiday in Nigeria um, today, tomorrow. So um, I pray the Lord will you know, help us to you know, maximize the time. Um, I will be ministering tomorrow at Thursday showers. So if you're in Lagos, it's public holiday. And you can come around to the Family Life Church in Ipuichu. You can do that, or you can join online, Fountain TV, 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right. Um, so I I this word came to my spirit, and we're looking at things that need to happen, you know, things we need to pay attention to as we navigate, as we get ready for this season of this increase. All right. Um, I feel um um I'm, I'm not we're not going, we're not diving right into all of that. But I just feel like what we've been doing, like yesterday, what we did yesterday, you know, Monday, other things we've been doing is just literally, you know, speaking into that. And one of the things I heard this morning was the cost of dishonor. Dishonor will cost you your increase. It can happen in any form, any shape. The cost of dishonor. Dishonor is more deadly than we think it is. The cost of dishonor to to deliberately dishonor people, right, is to is to go against the nature or the way God sees people. And you can't you can't love people more than God. Is to belittle God's creature. Is to belittle God's own people in us in our part of the world. People have used age as an excuse to dishonor people. People have used title as an excuse to dishonor people, I think, I think globally. People use status. Um, I believe that Asia, Africa, they are really more status driven, right? Than other part of the world. I mean, other part of the world could be, you know, but I'm saying, you see how this status state is like a divide of us and has not. Is who you know who you are, until, is who you are that determines how we respond to you. And it's very dangerous as believers, we can't be found that way. I, re, I dare say to you, you know, I was studying the scripture, you know, and we got through the, um, the part of the life of David, my that daily Bible in a one year thing that I was doing with a couple of my friends. And I realized that, you see, I, I read that scripture over and over. The Lord showed me something new. And I realized, I've shared it here on the call, that what the problem, the problem was not just that David, you know, slept with Bathsheba, that caused this problem. If you look deeply, the problem was this honor. The part of the problem was dishonor. Of course, the adultery was terrible. But the reason why, this same David. So you see, your heart might be great. You might be a great person. Like, you really love people, you honor. But it's a daily walk. It's a deliberate attempt to guard your heart. Because that the devil is always looking for a way to sow terrible seeds in our heart. 
So you look at the David, the same David, according to scripture, all right? According to scripture, in 1 Samuel 24, verse 6, David said, I will not do such thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, as I lay hands upon him. I will not, in 1 Samuel 26, 9, he had another opportunity. So no one has ever attacked the Lord's anointed and king, all right, and remain the same. Who can lay hands on God's anointed and be guiltless? Don't kill him. Or who can, who can remain innocent after taking God's anointed? Yes, it's the old covenant. And maybe they just value the life of the king and all. But we can read it now with a better understanding, with a better covenant. That you see, David's problem was that he, and let me tell you, now, this was in what? First Samuel 26. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, at Second Samuel 11 to 12, David could conjure such a thing to keep Uriah. Now, this is the same David, apparently, this same David that is also compassionate. So a moment of weakness, a moment of weakness and, 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 and gave room to, to, to the seed of this honor that cost him his, his, his family, cost him his legacy, cost him. Fine, thank God, God restored. God, you know, is he has the seed, but have you read the life of David after Bathsheba, after killing Uriah? Total mess. Total mess. I mean, all the way down from Solomon, West, West, Westest, anything like that. And then after Solomon, my God, those kings that came after Solomon, all the Jerubom, the Erubom, and all those things, the battle, the division of the entire land to the land of Judah and Israel, like it was, it's just a, it was just a mess. And if you trace it, traceable to the sin of dishonor. Because the same David that could not touch God's anointed the king could, from the place of lost, lost was part of the sin, started it all, lost. And then upon hearing that this person is, you know, because you could even dishonor God. You think that, didn't God see you? Because David did not do any repentance after sleeping with Bathsheba. He thought you could hide the sin. And eventually, of course, that's dishonor. God saw you. And then as God will have it, the girl got pregnant. And David, David, unlike David that we have seen across the world, David could conjure a matter. May we not even get promoted and dishonor enters our heart. May we not, may, may, may it not be that we are honorable now because of where we are, what we are going through, what we are believing God for. May we not, the greatest thing is that as you grow in life, as you grow in status, grow in, in wealth, grow, grow in a favor, may you remain honorable. Because that's what happened to David. He had become king. He's not running up and down one day. He's chilling, you know, in the morning. The guys are the few. This David that will want to always go to fight. But hey, okay, whatever. He's king. He chose not to go. And then he saw a, a woman. And then David could come up with that idea. And I said, it's a case of David got to a point where he was like, he was, I'm the king. They are under me. They are beneath me. It became a thing of, it's just my subject. That is why you could think you could take someone's life. You don't think, and it's not just Uriah that died. Because they staged that scene. It will Uriah and some people around you that died. Blood on your hands as a because of lust and dishonor. Because at that point where the woman got pregnant, he could have done so many things. He's the king for crying out loud. But he would rather not be put to shame. He embraced dishonor. He could have asked for mercy. He could have asked for anything. What am I saying? This morning I hear the, 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 the danger of dishonor, the cost of dishonor. May we not dishonor. May dishonor not find a seed in our hearts. Dishonor that we only, I was reading a book. By the way, it's a very good book. I think I recommend it. Um, Leadership Not by the Books. This guy, the founder of um, Obi Lobby. I'm just so blessed reading that book. Big shout out to the person that gave me. I'm so blessed reading that book. And I was, I got to a part where he was talking about something similar, about how in their company, it's not about title. Some people come into the company and find it very difficult to form because they, ah, I need my title to be thrown around. I need, you know, that's what gives me. And he said, no, the issue of honor for them, I'm paraphrasing, cut across. Whether you are, you are the beginner, you are the top, we must honor ourselves. And I want to employ everybody, even as our heart here as a ministry, honor 
You can't just be oh, access my deeper. Yes, that's the absolute truth. Because you honor everyone else, mean they all have the same access to you. And sometimes people mistake access for honor. But I feel that that's ignorance. And you know, we can we can teach that. We can grow in that. But much more than that, you cannot celebrate PI but look down on somebody else. If, especially people that even have uh, carrying out functions on my behalf. We can't. We can't. We can't, oh, wow, hi, hello, PI. But the next person on the call, the next person you see, you don't treat them well. You don't speak well to them. Because the truth of the matter is you really don't honor PI. You probably just are about maybe the title or for whatever reason, whatever, what. Because if you truly honor a people, you will honor them in and out. You will honor them true. You will honor that which concerns them. You will honor the things connected to them. You honor the opportunities given. You honor the favor extended. You honor the privilege. You honor the access. You honor the opportunities. You honor true and true. And sometimes I remember, I always say this story. I remember what, the first time I went to Bethel. And I was really ready to sow seeds. I mean, I, went, I, I came prepared. And I remember that day, I, I was already, but I just... I think I was feeling something. And then my friend said to me, told me, said to me, she just, I don't know even what he said. I don't know if I couldn't. He said, you see, I feel the Lord is saying that don't be carried away or focus on just the senior prophets. Don't forget the junior prophet. I had a restraint from sewing into the top, the guys I really wanted to sew. And one of the people I sewed into, it's funny how that opened up a door of relationship that today I'm benefiting from. But if I did not put my, God was teaching me something. Sometimes very easy. I read in that man's book as well, which is my heartbeat. How he, he gives to mission is very, yeah, he, he, he got to a point where they are busy. So I give it to mission. The Lord said to him, the missions are no more important than your staff. So he says, I do not get weary of doing good. Starting from those in, the, in Jerusalem, your Jerusalem, starting from those around you. And he said, he, he just, the Lord just directed him like, hello, and he just started learning that I'm, I'll never put you in a position where you have to choose between mission and your people. If it, this people, mission one that you can even give out, it's because of the people that are doing this work. And he started finding out the balance, all right? Leadership not by the books. He started finding the balance and blessing his people. And the, the, as in, it's such a beautiful story, honor. And I remember how for me too, the Lord took my eyes. I've, I've gone through that series of time where the Lord would... You know, some people have used giving to buy favor. They've used service to try to buy. I mean, there's a place, the, the place of the gift of man will make way. But when you begin to scheme that way, you are making, in, uh, you are not purifying what you're doing. You're introducing purity into what you're doing. Introducing purity to what you're doing. This same David, we can learn from him. He could see a man by the road and he could give compassion. Before he found out where's the glad, where they took his family to. What are you losing because of this honor? What are you losing because of this honor? What are you losing because of this honor? And this honor even to God in his presence. How I keep saying it that I get it, though, want to capture a moment. Though. Well, worshiping and the worship is on us. We have to we have to find a way about these things. I know you I mean something just happened. There might be a moment that I just feel ah, let me capture this, no problem. So sometimes what I tell myself is the people that are recording, you know, this is a, an event that maybe you can never get back the recording. Once in a while, I get it. But if there's a recording, I can actually go back there, you know, and take moments. Oh, I'm or maybe you are led by God to record yourself worshiping. Then maybe it's for yourself, but it's becoming very scary. That even worship moments, I remember, I remember I just was saying something, do you remember? And it's, it's, it's become very scary that even worship moments, we have turned it to be about us. Some things we do, some dance, we, the way we even dance. Now, hear me when I say the way we do dance. I'm saying the motive behind every dance. Some people, as some instrumentalists, when they are playing, it's just, it's like everybody's just catching crews. Then some things people are singing. I remember one day, I'm like, it's almost like we can't praise God anymore. The Ajasa, I don't think it's God we are ailing anymore. It's some funny things we have, you know, bringing the strange song in, into the, I mean, if we want to do wedding, that we're doing party, and we want to dance, no problem, let's do that. But when we are praising God in this house, there has to be a balance. I get the excitement, but you know, I love the way, um, what's her name? Um, this girl puts it. Is um, um um energy um adrenaline is not the same thing as the Holy Spirit. 
It's not the same thing as the Holy Spirit. We are eager. So this dishonor, what is the cost of this honor? Are there some sacred things the Lord is speaking to your heart, is doing with you, and you're not honorable about it? Oh no, I remember Pastor Fe- Apostle Femi Adu um, brought a, a, an instruction about how the Lord, he felt that he had to take his daughter in honoring his daughter, taking her to a football match, staying there, honoring and really serving her. The Lord opened up a door. Apparently, a man was watching, they got into conversation and the God opened up a door. So when I'm saying honor, I'm talking about honor. Don't confuse Andrew Lanint for the oil. Exactly. A lot of us are hyper. We are hyper. And we think we're worshiping God. We're not. And I, I don't get it. Because if you if look at the way worship is done, we can't worship and we're focusing on ourselves. I can't count the number of times that I, I put that thing down. You really Do you really want to worship God? We can't. It's not about us. It's self-worship. It's dishonoring. It's, I'm sorry, I've tried to reason it, I've tried to understand it, I've tried to give excuses for it, but hey, it, and then when it becomes a lifestyle, it can't be, there are times that yeah, it can't be every time you're in place of watching that you have your phone, you are, no, what are we doing? We need to be in the moment, so, sometimes we're so bothered capturing the moment, we lose the moment, and I'm telling you that even I had to learn this, I had to learn this, is it, like I said, maybe you're in a, you watch the concert, you want to, but I tell myself, I remember when I went for Joy is coming. I took a, a few clips. It was towards the end. But later I'm like, ah, oh, this guy did not put this thing on. And because let me see, you know what? You can live in the memory of what happened to you at that mo- at that mom at that moment. That's trying to just, you know, what are we missing now? And it's because even sometimes, even praying in your home. I get this. Oh, I wrote a book about the prayer, the Holy Ghost, you know, leave prayed up. You know, we can, but if all your prayer time is praying and something, at what one moment are you able to be still before God? You know, I get it because I, I, I'm for that. I'm praying as I'm cooking. I'm praying as I'm sweeping. That's, that's great. That's you living a life of praying. Yeah, but we have not turned it to. Have you noticed that your concentration and focus has been attacked? That you can't just just pray, blank out, and just pray. You, you, because all you know how to do is pray. And it's like you are using two stones to kill one bear. One, let's not, let me just do. So what's the, what is the cost of dishonor? In our lives, what is the cost of dishonor in your relationships? Some of us, I don't honor the people around us. Honor to the driver, honor to your cook. Some of us, I'm telling you, your life of state, it will fall. And I don't care what title you have. And I mean, no disrespect. I don't care how many years, what smoke is coming from your nose. I don't care. First Corinthians 13, prophesy, let it be accurate to the T. It doesn't matter. Sacrifice your life as Messiah. You don't do it out of love. You just wasted your life and wasted effort. What was the testimony of your life by your spouse, by your driver, by your neighbor, by your cook, by people around you? How do you submit to authority? Especially authority of people that maybe you think you are better than them. You are more anointed than them. You are more what? You are older than them. You have more status than them. How do you deal with that? Sometimes I just smile when I see some things. I just smile when I see some things. How? How? I've been on the, I've told and I've tried and people have called people and you see them go talk anyhow. And the moment you maybe mention your name, you're like, oh, 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 oh. I get it that maybe the, if the oh, oh, is as, oh, wow. I'm seeing, but if it's to adjust your dishonor because now you know who you are talking to, it's sad. What is the cost of dishonor in your marriage? What is the cost of dishonor with your relationships? Some of you have friends that are, multi-dimensional but you can't see them beyond you know one of the reasons why they could not receive from god is because they dishonored jesus in nazareth they were they could not get past that it was jesus did that same jesus that we used to push tire together on the road they could they were offended can you imagine they were offended that that is the jesus you mean that's the messiah ah uh-uh. bobo ah uh-uh. no be bobo tv that that one they could not get past it Look at what it cost them. The miracles, the signs and wonders, their name for is written in unbelief that they'll be judged because of some people, cities that God went. They could not. You cannot receive anything from God if you are dishonorable. You can't receive anything from even God cannot open up the heart of men to you if you are dishonorable. But sometimes you just don't know at what point is your breaking point. It has to be a lifestyle. Honor should not be a cloth we put on, depending on where we are, whom we are speaking to, what we are doing. 
Oh, some days we get it right. Maybe some days you don't. No problem. You get up again and you move. I heard it this morning. I felt in my heart the cost of dishonor. What is the cost of dishonor? What is the cost of looking down on people? What is the cost of thinking you are better than other people? What is the cost of thinking your way or the highway? What is the cost of your worship? When you are worshiping God in public, see, our children are watching also. If we raise our children with phone, they are watching also. They, I'm telling you, I am a typical example of I became what I was building. I was building Sister Fikayo. I can't remember, I was sharing with somebody yesterday. I can't remember when she started teaching me how to journal. My work with God, I, my work with God grew with journaling. And that's why my prayer, I like my devotion is, is quite, I can't help, I can't teach it. I can't, and I feel like everybody's devotion, the way they relate with God is unique. All right. But see, listen, I remember how I started, why I saw my 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 sister. If you raise your children thinking worship is with phone, worship is um, is a particular way, worship is if they don't learn reverence from you, you are damaging a child's notion of God. I remember back then, some of us might not like our parents. I may remember how you used to do um, worship morning devotion. You cannot even you can't even sneeze too much. Your mother is already looking at you with sad eye. There was something it did to us. There was something he did to us. It's time to pray. Put your jesting aside. And I'm speaking this even to my heart. We have to model the right thing. You go to church. I go to places. I say, sometimes if you don't model it, it's as, it's as deep as even as a leader, the way you, you worship and lead, the way you reverence God rubs off on people. I remember I was somewhere and someone was, was touched that, ah, how can the pastor be on the floor? I'm like wondering, I don't understand. I'm having a moment with God as well as you are. I really don't, I'm sorry, it's not about you. I'm not here to be a billboard to lead you to God's presence. And the person really was confused. Was confused, not in a negative way, but it was impacted. I, I don't see this. You are, and, and to be honest, somebody has said it in passing to me, a leader, that you know you can actually choose the kind of picture that is out there. Almost like you can photo up these things. If you don't want your most vulnerable side to be seen when you're watching, I'm like, why, why not? Who are we, who are we worshiping? How you are modeling service. And your children used to going to late to church. I don't know why I'm going this way or going early because mommy and daddy will go to early to church. If one of your spouses, if one of the spouses not that are you that you can, oh yeah, no. Are they seeing that ah, we're serving? What is the idea of service your children are seeing? Oh, blessed be to God for our parents. Who will take us to Sunday school? Who we who were seeing? that we would go and I would go and do work. And they see mommy and daddy serving in the house of God. Do we talk about these things? What are they seeing? What do they hear mommy? This I grew up all of a sudden, some things I'm doing today, I literally was programmed watching my sister. Our children are being programmed, watching us, watching what is around us. Teach them the honor of the presence of God. Teach them when we're in the presence of God, this is how we do it. This, and guess what? Teach them, they carry it everywhere they go. Teach them to honor that presence. Teach them to respond to the presence of God. Fill them with the Holy Ghost if you can. Lay your hands upon them. Begin to pray over them. Let them, I'm a typical example of this. My mom took me to crusade. I just realized that some things I'm doing, my mom started it first. My mom started the first prayer room. I believe in our district. She started a prayer room and I would go there. I just remember I would go there and lay down on the first floor. And I can't remember, I can remember the rug. It's the same rug we have in the prayer room in, in the off. The same bigger is a bigger space. That one was a bigger space. And I just remember, look at years down the line without knowing we have a prayer room. So carry me to crusade. Years down the line, we're having when friends pray. What are your children beholding? They will know God and honor God through your life. Your children that have older children, if you are talking bad about people, if you talk down to people, the way you are talking to your driver, the way you are talking to your cook, the way you are talking to your staff, the way you are talking to your spouse, you are programming your child. And they're just going to repeat pattern. They are just going to repeat pattern. Above all, what is the cost and the implication of dishonor? So I'm going to pray this morning. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Dishonor, dishonor is, is deep. Is deep. If you read the life of, of, of David afterwards, my God, it was so. Do ah. you know that after David became king, is as if there was 
we, you know, the, there was time we had peace all around. After that peace all around, I see just time is firing. And I'm like, what's going on? Thank God he has a great heart with God. So you can have a great heart with God and have a troubled life, apparently. He had a great heart. I don't want that. I don't want a great heart with God and have a troubled life that could have been avoided. He was one battle to the other. He's rebellion. He's running. Taman, Amon. Um, He's this one. This one kill him. This one do that. And then his son, Solomon, that one was just like, you see, that one took it to the next level. So his father had committed adultery one. That one took it to le- 1,000 women. I'm sorry. It's how many sex in a day? Which, I mean, like what? There was nothing his eyes saw that he didn't behold. This is a man asked for wisdom. God gave it to him. After a while, people, it's that like increased taxation just to keep building so that he can just keep having people. Like, it, whatever we pass on to the next generation, items. So if it's negative, it items. If it's positive, it items. And look at all the way to Ahab. All the way to Ahab. That fight. That division that happened from Solomon is what created the whole Arab chaos and all the whole thing. Look at the cost of one moment of dishonor. I'm going to pray to God. Father, ask for mercy. In any way, I have practiced dishonor or modeled dishonor. In my family, to my children, to my spouse, around me, Lord, have mercy on me. And from today, help me uphold the lifestyle of honor. Can we open our mouths and begin to pray? Wherever we are, if it's not noisy, you can begin to talk to the Lord. Lord, help us. Help us. Help me, oh God. Help me, help me, help me. Search me, oh God. Search me. Are there things that I'm okay with, but you are not? Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. Help us, oh God, to be honorable. Help us, oh God, to show, to live a life of honor. Honor to you, honor to men, and honor to ourselves. Let us even honor ourselves. If you honor yourselves, you speak great words to yourselves. You will speak the word God has spoken to you, to yourself. Father, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name of praise. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Honor the Lord as well with your substance, with your seed, with your talent, with your business, with everything that pertains to you. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, we're excited about what God is set to do. July, August is about to get really busy. We know God is set to meet us at a point of our needs. Um, the retreat, his retreat is coming in November. I'm excited to announce to us Minister Kika is going to be in the country. The rest of God will sort it out. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great time. Um, it's going to be an amazing time in God's presence. It's in November, the second weekend in November. So you can start putting your resources together, putting your leave time together. It's going to be a powerful one by the grace of God. Um, I think it's women on mission or something like that. So it's going to be an amazing time in God's presence. Um, we have some of our speakers in house here as well. So I'm really excited about what God is set to do. And I pray the Lord God will strengthen and honor us all in the name of Jesus. So also, um, Hope Nation is having retreats. It's the 13th of July to the chat to the Sunday morning, I believe, service. If you can, please can be a camper. It's going to be a great time in God's presence. We have Buki and um, Robert Martin, they're going to have an amazing testimony. Pastor Tochu, Reverend Tokes, Apostle Femis Adon, myself, and Pio. It's going to be a great time of sessions. If you can, if you want to retreat, it's a great time to retreat. They will drop the link as well. You can register and just have a great start into the next half of the year as we trust God. And of course, we have Warrior Friends Prayer Abuja. Um, so we have a lot, like, wow. Warrior Friends Prayer Abuja. Is in August by the grace of God. I have a go from God. So we're going to have Refuel in October online. Amen. And we're going to end with the When Friends Pray Lagos in November. So it promises to be a great time. We are going to do a free retreat by the grace of God for campus undergrads um, in August as well. We're trusting God 
to put everything together for us. And it's going to be a great time in God's presence. Amen. All right, go ahead, register. And um, you can come in and out. You don't want to stay for the retreat. It's going to be at um, um, Akoka, Bariga Akoka. So um, Freak Plaza. So it's going to be a great time in God's presence. All right. Have a great one. Remember, you can use this link to join all that watches at 9, at 12, at 3, at um, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6. We're back tomorrow. Interestingly, we start a prayer for singles on Zoom today for um, with um, the for, with church. Church, we're starting a prayer for singles. You can check the details on my page or fountain opening page page. The one we did for my people was so good. So please, if you are single, please don't miss this one. All right, God bless you. Have a great day.